Welcome to Storytime. Frieza, who you could be mistaken for thinking is dead, is actually alive. His dad, King Cold, picked him up and has had his men turn him into a cyborg, increasing his power even more. Frieza is now coming to Earth for his revenge, and Gohan, Kudirin, Vegeta, Piccolo, Tenshinhan, Chotsu, and Yamcha all meet up to plan their inevitable demise. Bulma comes too since you never got to see Frieza, and everyone's going to die anyway. But then, suddenly, a mysterious and super rad 90s kid I totally wanted to be when I was little lands in front of Frieza. He slices up Frieza's henchmen with no effort, and then reveals that he's a Super Saiyan, in case you didn't think he was the coolest ever yet. The kid slices Frieza into pieces and then blasts them all to oblivion, then makes quick work of King Cold's as well. Everyone freaks out the appropriate amount, and the kid says that Goku is returning to Earth in about 3 hours, and basically refuses to give any information about himself while they all wait. Goku finally arrives in a pod wearing a snazzy new outfit, and the kid asks for a private chat. He reveals that his name is Trunks, and he's from the future, and defeated Frieza to preserve history, although it turns out Goku has learned teleportation from the planet Yardrot and could have gotten there early anyway. Oh, by the way, Trunks is Vegeta and Bulma's son, so there's that. Trunks has come back from the past because in three years, two artificial humans made by Dr. Ghetto, a member of the former Red Ribbon Army, are going to appear and kill everybody except for he and Gohan. Goku died to a heart virus and didn't even get to fight. With some future heart medicine and some time to train, he's hoping they'll be able to defeat them this time. Trunks heads back to the future, promising he'll come back and help if the machine can recharge. Okay, so, time travel. We're gonna take a break right here to break it down, because time travel in Dragon Ball tends to be kind of confusing for people, but it's actually not that bad if it's laid out simply. The way Trunks' time machine works is this. You can set a time in the past to travel to, but once you travel to that place you have changed history and created a new timeline entirely. In other words, if Trunks' point of origin is A, B is a point that existed in his past, but because he's gone there everything going forward is changed. The machine can then go back to its point of origin so nothing else in that timeline changes. He can then travel again to timeline B since it's already been created, but the more things change between times, the more new timelines are created in turn. There are officially four timelines created during the story, and we'll update the diagram as needed but for the most part timelines A and B are the only ones we really care about. So back to Goku, he explains to everyone that when Namek was exploding he found one of the Ginyu Force's pods and pushed buttons until it took him to Yardrot. Piccolo, who is eavesdropping on Goku and Trunks, explains about the artificial humans without telling them who Trunks is. Bulma wants to find Dr. Ghetto and keep him from activating them in the first place, but Vegeta threatens to kill her if she tries because he wants to see how strong they are. Kudede notes that having a common enemy keeps them all working together, especially Vegeta who everyone's still pretty wary of because he tried to kill so many of them. Everyone separates. Vegeta asks Bulma's father to build him a room with a gravity machine that goes up to 300 times Earth's gravity. Gigi wants Gohan to study and Goku to get a job, but begrudgingly agrees to let them fight as long as they give up martial arts in three years. Everyone spends the three years training and besides Vegeta all gathered to wait for the artificial humans. Bulma shows up with baby trunks too because you don't get to see robot people every day. Though the artificial humans are a little late, they show up and blast down Yajirobe's ship after he brings the gang some senzu beans and the warriors go into pursuit. The artificial humans, numbers 19 and 20, don't have cheese so they have to look the old fashioned way. Hopefully someone strong will find them first. Oh no, it's just Yamcha. He asks a sketchy old man with the red ribbon army uniform and the giant doll if they've seen any artificial humans around. Twenty grabs Yamcha by the face, absorbing his chi before putting his hand through him. The rest of the gang shows up and evacs Yamcha, who tells everyone about their abilities. Number 20 tells Goku that ever since he defeated the Red Ribbon Army he's been observing him, up through his fight with Vegeta, which of course is the strongest he ever got. Goku reveals his Super Saiyan transformation and faces off against number 19, who quickly runs out of stamina. Not only has 19 been siphoning his chi, but Goku's heart condition is kicked in, making him unable to fight. He never took the medicine since he hadn't gotten sick yet, which is kind of a huge bummer now. Things look bleak until Vegeta suddenly arrives. Yamcha, who has finally accepted that he's basically done fighting, agrees to take Goku home. Vegeta reveals that he's become a Super Saiyan too. The rage at hitting his own limits and being surpassed by Goku triggering his transformation. He rips off number 19's arms and destroys him easily. 20 runs off into the mountains, trying to get back to his laboratory. Eventually the group finds him and Piccolo lays down his first real beatdown in a while. Meanwhile, Trunks comes back to this time and finds the broken number 19, but turns out 19 and 20 actually weren't the artificial humans from his time, another change to the timeline he's caused. He finds the others and lets them know things are getting weird, and 20 uses the opportunity to escape, almost taking down Bulma and baby Trunks. Trunks is pretty mad that his dad didn't try to save them, but Bulma recognizes 20 as Dr. Ghetto himself, and realizes he probably converted himself into a robot. Trunks tells them numbers 17 and 18 are the ones he knew, both teenagers with attitude. Bulma gives them the relative location of Dr. Ghetto's lab, and everyone heads over there, while Piccolo tells everyone who Trunks is because he likes to gossip. 20 makes it to his lab and reluctantly activates number 17 and 18, who he has on ice since he can't control them. They have infinite chi engines that make them incredibly powerful, and they decide to get rid of Dr. Ghetto's emergency shutdown controller as the good guys bust in. 
17 and 18 activate number 16 as well. The 20 says he's too strong and it's a bad idea. As thanks from turning them from humans to robots, 17 kills 20 before taking off with 18 and 16. Having all been designed to kill Son Goku, they want to go after him, but decide to take their time and make it a road trip for fun. Vegeta finds them and 18 volunteers to fight. Even as a Super Saiyan, Vegeta is totally gamed by 18. Everyone else shows up but 17 tells them not to interfere, but of course they do and 17 has to mop them up while 18 finishes off Vegeta, though she doesn't kill him. Kudidin is the only one who hasn't been beat up, and 18 gives him a kiss on the cheek before the artificial humans continue their road trip. Vegeta and Piccolo both fly off. Vegeta to Brood and Piccolo to have a little talk with Kami. Piccolo needs some power and he needs it now, so he tells Kami to recombine with him. Kami wants to wait until things get really bad though, so they have to just chill and watch for a bit. Kudidin and Trunks move Goku to Kamisen and Zylan to buy some time, and Trunks wonders what could have caused time to change so much. When they call Bulma, she lets them know someone found a strange capsule corp vehicle that turns out to be Trunks' time machine, but all old and broken up. Trunks, Gohan, and Bulma go to check it out, and it's definitely the time machine, but there's a hole in it and a strange empty egg. The settings of the time machine show that it came from three years in Trunks' future, and arrived one year before him. In other words, this machine actually created Timeline B and is responsible for all the changes. Gohan finds the molted shell of whatever was the egg. Kami and Piccolo look down from the sanctuary, and Kami realizes that the uneasiness he's had for the past few years is because there's a creature potentially even more powerful than the artificial humans, and his fears are confirmed when a monster pops up in Gingertown, murdering the entire population. Everyone else watches the news in horror, as a reporter who goes to Gingertown is killed on live TV. Kami decides that things have gotten dire, and finally agrees to fuse to Piccolo. Of course, Piccolo insists on being the base, and the resulting being, who calls himself a nameless Namekian but is basically just Piccolo, is insanely strong. He flies to Gingertown, where he comes face to face with the monster from the future. 